I refused to download a dating app or like really talk to any guys or anything until I knew I was not doing it for validation. So self-conscious of how my looks. Do not spend your energy trying to convince someone and scream at someone and try and explain to someone how they're making you feel when they do not care enough to listen. The way someone treats you says and speaks volumes more than it does about them than it ever, ever will about you. But well, what if he says no? But what if he says yes? Like, why are we always thinking about the, like, what if the negative thing happens? But what if the fucking great thing happens? Hello! Welcome back to my channel. So today we are in the car, which I always love. I always think a come drive with me or just like a general car setting is nice i like a car setting anyway today as you can see by the title is a girl talk boy talk advice come drive with me i absolutely love you guys know filming chatty videos and i also love videos where i feel like i'm actually potentially like adding value to your life i've had like a weird epiphany it's not weird just had an epiphany recently about like what I actually want from life and like what I actually want to do with my life and yeah I just love it when you guys are like oh that bit of advice or the way you spoke about this or you getting up early in the mornings motivating me anything like I just want to help you guys you know I just want to add some value to your life so videos like this are always like my favorite thing to film as well because I just love to chat and I do think I give quite good advice I'm not gonna lie I do like to think I'm the friend that people come to for advice I know I'm that friend for some people, maybe not for everyone. So I'm gonna go and grab myself a Blom Roast Starbucks coffee because if you drink any other form of coffee from Starbucks, you're done. Are you new here? <laughs> so I'm gonna go and do that and then we're gonna park up and I'm gonna have a read through your dilemmas that you send me over on Instagram. If you are new here, go and follow my Instagram. And like I said, I love giving advice. So who knows, maybe, maybe there's something coming soon that's extremely related to this and is very exciting but is also a disgustingly long work in progress if you don't watch the weekly vlogs you're missing out all right you don't know what's you're new here <laughs> oh i love filming these videos i just love talking it makes me so happy it can honestly change my day around i just absolutely love it play florence by law Carner from spotify Florence by Loyal Khan and now playing on Spotify. She could be my little freckle face fidget. Me but miniature, sleeping on other media stories while I'm showing her a signet Saying that she's finished but I tell her eat a spinach Cause you'll see the sky's the limit, trust Cause remember that I promised her some pancakes So if I stagger to the stove and start to stand race See I'ma make them love my now, mate I see you punching on Hiya, please can I get a blonde roast latte? Yeah, of course, can I have anything else for you? Um, can I get a soy milk just please? Soy milk, yeah? Yes please Anything else? No, that's great, thank you that's all right. Thank you so Thank much. You. you too. Don't move, please. Please just fucking stay there. Right, I screenshotted some. Well, yeah, I screenshotted quite a lot. And we're just going to go into it. Some of them are like boyfriend dilemmas. Some of them are dilemmas with you guys. Some of them are just like general questions, I think. But we're going to start off with this one for no reason. It's just the one that I screenshotted first. It says, I'm struggling with my mental health, but I found it hard to open up to my boyfriend. I feel like this is something I've always been quite bad with. Not with like boyfriend, with like people in general. Like I hate turning around and being like, mm, do you know what? I'm actually not doing so great. I think that's actually a hard thing to do. And I think people don't really give it enough credit for being as hard as it is. Like everyone's like, just talk to someone, you know, like make sure you're talking to someone. Like, yeah, that's all well and good, but it actually can be quite a tricky thing to do, especially if like, I always think it's a hard thing to do if you're seen as someone who's always quite all right or like the funny friend or like whatever, do you know what I mean? I always think it's hard to just be like, mm, yeah, but I'm still not great at the moment. So first of all, stop being like, don't be so hard on yourself. Like it is hard and that's okay, but it is important to reach out to people and try and talk to people. So I'm glad that you asked that question because hopefully I can try and help you. I think as well, you need to remember, this doesn't make the act of it necessarily easier. Like this isn't a strategy I'm about to give you, but just remember like your boyfriend, especially your parents, your friends, 
everybody cares for you everybody wants what's best for you so here you're saying your boyfriend so maybe you do talk to your parents or whatever like your boyfriend especially hopefully you're in a happy healthy loving relationship your boyfriend wants what's best for you your boyfriend wants you to be happy your boyfriend wants to even help you be happy like the people that are closest to you like that they want the best for you so they want you to tell them if like your mental health isn't great or something so i suggest as hard as it is and it's not too too helpful it's one of them things you just have to kind of go for so next time he asks you how's your day been maybe like you don't fully open up yet you kind of ease into it and just say oh do you know what i've not actually had the best day hopefully if you tell him that you've not had a great day or you've not been feeling the best or if it's just like how are you you know what i'm actually not that great hopefully that could quite naturally lead on to a conversation or if you're not ready to talk about it that time just be like i've actually not been feeling great recently at all i'd like to have like a conversation with you like about it i'd love to open up with you and like get some advice and just like have you know that i'm not feeling great so you can like be there for me a bit more but yeah i think maybe start by opening up about something little just like oh do you know what i haven't had a great day um, and hope that he asks you why and then you can kind of go from there the thing is it does take a lot of courage and it is hard and there's no like crazy magical answer for stuff like this it's one of the things where it's just like when you feel ready you have to kind of do it but just remember that which is going to make it so much easier like your boyfriend isn't going to think anything of you your boyfriend's not going to think that you're a, bur a burden that is the right word isn't it a burden <laughs> on him like you're not you're not a burden on people i think that's what i always think if i'm trying to open up about my mental health you're not being a burden these people are here to help you these people love you these people want to help help you they want to know if you're going through something so you're not a burden these people are here for you your boyfriend's gonna help you and hopefully that just keep telling yourself that for like a week or so maybe do some positive affirmations for like a week i'm not a burden i said i deserve to be happy i deserve to be able to open up to people do some affirmations about being vulnerable um like opening yourself up to people and allowing yourself to be vulnerable to people um if you do that for like a week or so maybe by the time that you come to say it it might be a bit easier because you'll have in your head that like it's not it's not an issue, it's not a burden, it's not a bad thing, it's just something that you're going through. I thought this was quite good because I think I um, used to be like this. So it says, how to stop speaking to guys just because you like the attention. And I think the root of this obviously comes from self-love. So a similar thing again, affirmations, affirmations, journaling, like giving yourself the attention that you want someone else to give you, I think is always a great thing. So something I've been meaning to do, cause I've seen something like a few things like this on TikTok. And I was like, I want to do one of them for myself. So you know them TikToks that are like how to date yourself. Write down like what it is you like about the attention. Is it the compliments? Is it like the physical, physical touch? Is it the gift? Is it the quality time? Is it the, like basically what's your love language? Like what attention is it that you like that you're craving? Um, what would you want from a boy? Like, I like the attention, I like date nights, I like this, I like that. And then try and like do these things for yourself. Fuck, I've got no battery, are you joking me? And then try and do all of these things, all of this attention that you crave for yourself. One thing that I did is when I broke up with my ex, I refused to download a dating app or like really talk to any guys or anything until I knew I was not doing it for validation or because I was bored or anything like that. I was like, when I next go onto a dating app or talk to a guy, like, right, we are back and I've got another battery. We're in a different car park and my coffee's probably cold. But I think I was saying that like, if you're on dating apps and stuff and you know you're looking for validation from boys, just come off them. I know they're fun and sometimes they're a bit light lighthearted and it's kind of meaningless, but like, just come off them for a little bit until you feel like you are giving yourself that happiness by like I said, journaling, affirmations, anything like that and as well i have my friends keep me accountable i was like don't you let me download tinder until i'm the happiest girl alive and i know that it's literally just for some light-hearted whatever fun and yeah you will get there eventually as well i think it's i do think it's slightly natural like let's not pretend we're superhumans it is natural to want validation from other people and want attention from other people but it is important that you kind of fill that void yourself first so come off any dating apps you're on maybe stop going on dates with guys just for like a few months until like you just feel like you're super super happy and you're super ready and you're not there for attention and you're there for like not even necessarily something more than that like you don't have to be only going on dating dating apps and dates and stuff for relationships but just so you know it is for fun and if it it's not for attention and validation and to make you feel better about yourself because you should be the only one who can make yourself feel better than you better about yourself letting go of toxic long-term friendships i think friendship breakups can be harder than breakups in it because I don't know, like losing a friend, like losing a girlfriend, like is sad because 
once upon a time you would have been best friends, you would have done stuff together and like it's sad that it has to turn into something like that if they've turned toxic or you've fallen out or something. But I think you just have to cut the cord, don't you? Again, it's one of them things where it's like, there's no secret recipe. Just know that you are so much better than that. If you are someone who you feel like you can, oh my God, that guy's just spitting on the floor in front of me. If, you're, no, if you know you're someone who can maybe deal with confrontation, if you know you're someone who can confront them, confront them first. They might have, not a reason, I don't think there's ever a reason to, pre to be toxic to someone else or treat someone else like shit, but maybe you'll make them realize that they've got some healing to do themselves. And then maybe, I don't know, you could work through it, you could apologize. I am quite bad at that. I don't know if that's, I think that's potentially a toxic trait in myself. I'm not great. I can do it and I have done it. I've always kind of proved to myself that I probably shouldn't have. I'm not great at always forgiving people. I just, yeah, I'm not great at it. But if that's something you're good at and something you want to do, obviously you can try and see if you can solve the friendship first, but it doesn't sound like you've fallen out. A toxic friend is like someone that I think you should just see you later. Because although it's hard, it might be scary, it might be hard, but like, you know you're going to be better off for it. You're not going to have a toxic friend around. And just value and love yourself enough so that you know that's not what you deserve and then them ties are a lot easier to cut, trust me. And I think that's all you've got to do. I don't think there's point making up with a toxic person, I'm not going to lie. Obviously, I don't know your situation, but I would just cut the ties. Sorry. Just go and find your people. Cut her off. You can even have a conversation about it. Or you could just, I feel like toxic people, I'm sorry, you can ghost. Is that brutal from me? If they're making you feel like shit and you don't have it in you to confront them, that's fine, leave them. If they're making you feel like shit, like you don't have to have a big conversation about it. Because especially if they're toxic, no matter how loud you shout, no matter how much sense you are talking, they will not listen to you. They don't want to listen, they don't want to know. Do not spend your energy trying to convince someone and scream at someone and try and explain to someone how they're making you feel when they do not care enough to listen. Like, do not waste your energy on someone who is not gonna listen to you and is not gonna change their mind. So leave them and go and find a hobby, go and find like a club, go and find anything that you can kind of like go and make friends at. Things like girls who graduate, like do events. Like there's people on Instagram that will like do events, like host friends, there's like so many Facebook groups and like communities you can join to make friends or like, even something like Shreddy, if you're into the gym, like they have a community page. Like I'm pretty sure Beyond has the same, where like people make friends. Like there is so many ways that you could find your people and make friends. You might be at uni, go and join a society, or go and find like a book club or like a yoga class or like anything. Like there's so many ways to make friends. And also be happy in your own company until then. Like go to the cinema by yourself, take yourself for breakfast, take yourself for lunch. I said cinema because that's literally you right there. Um, but yeah. Cut her off. My friends leave me out and they don't do it to other friends, but I feel like they think it's okay to do to me. This is similar to the last one. It's not. Confront them about it. Tell them about it. If they're not willing to listen, if they're not willing to change, if they're not willing to see what they're doing wrong, leave it and go and find some other friends. Um, and I feel like that's all there is really to it, which is sad and it's horrible people are treating you like that. But as I always say, the way someone treats you says and speaks volumes more than it does about them, than it ever, ever will about you. Why the way someone's treating you, that doesn't mean anything about you. You're not the better friend, you're not the worst friend. You're not less fun than these girls over here, they're not leaving out. It speaks volumes about them, that they have it in them to leave out someone, to leave out their friend. That's not, that's not cool, that's not the vibe. So have a conversation about it, see if it can be resolved, see if they're just being silly or whatever or if there's like an underlying issue, miscommunication. Um, and if not, don't waste your energy on people like that. Go and use your energy to go and find new people. I thought this one was not funny, but like funny because it's relevant in my life. And mm, that wasn't a good thing to say. Oh my God, that went down the wrong hole. Me and my housemate. <laughs> I've been having this conversation for the last like week. So this says, I know this is weird, but I'm so self-conscious of how my looks. Is this strange? No, it's not strange. Because I think as well as girls, if you're straight, obviously, we don't see other girls' vaginas. We don't see other girls' flaps, labias. <laughs> um, so like, you don't know what is normal, what isn't. And like, some girls obviously like maybe watch porn, but like, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I've said this in videos. I've never actually really watched porn, um, but I'm guessing they've all got gorgeous vaginas. <laughs> From the nature of what porn is, I'm sure these girls look unbelievable. I'm sure their vaginas are stunning. 
uh, not the norm. Do you know why this conversation came up? So I'm going to insert the picture here. We were looking at this and we were talking about which vagina ours is in the house and we were all really laughing and honestly, Gabby heard me from upstairs. I was screaming laughing with Lou because um, we thought we had the same labias. <laughs> and then we proceeded to watch Naked Attraction to make ourselves feel better about ourselves. Not to like point out like ugly labias, <laughs> but because we were just like, look at all these, like they're all so different. We were like, I don't know, like, I think it's fine, it's natural. There's no ugly vagina, like, it is what it is. If you're self-conscious for, like, a boy, I'm pretty sure a boy will not care how your vagina looks because it is a vagina. And he probably is thinking about 101 other things. It's like what people say, like, about, like, boobs. It's like, your boy isn't looking at your boobs, he's just looking at them thinking, wow, boobs, nipples. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't probably really care what they look like so it's not strange it is completely normal like don't worry about it like I'm I was gonna say like I'm 20 as if like I'm really old but like in our house like we're 20 21 and we were still like what are your labias look like <laughs> so yeah this casting thing there's like 24 different vaginas on here do you know what I mean none is better none is worse they're just bloody labias who gives a fuck <laughs> Someone said, I get the ick when boys are nice to me. Ha 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 ha. Hashtag help. Not to go weird and philosophical on here, but is there a reason that you feel like you don't deserve people to be nice to you? Like, why is it you're getting an ick because a boy's nice to you? Are you not used to boys being nice to you? Because this is what I found. Is this rude to say? I've had this conversation with my boyfriend. I'm going to say this in a way that doesn't completely out my boyfriend. I have had this conversation with him before. We talked so much about like the way we felt about each other when we first met each other. But there was a few things he would say or do that I was like, Icky. And then I reflected on it and I was like, why do I find that icky? I was like, that's so bizarre. Like he would talk about something like really passionately, like a interest or a hobby. And I'd be like, oh God, like icky. God, he's so vulnerable. And then I was like, why is that icky? Because that's everything that I would aspire to be. Like I aspire to be able to openly and freely talk about like my passions and my interests and my likes and dislikes and just be fully just have a fully like vulnerable open conversation about my passions like that is literally like my goal in life to just be able to talk to people um like that but i find it so hard so i was like why when he's doing it do i find it icky and i was like well i think i find it icky because uh, i really struggle to do what it is that you're doing so really it was just a reflection of me as i think everything is everything in life is a reflection of ourselves and our perception on things so uh, have a little reflect and that goes for everyone with an ick, other than like, you know, them being like naked in a bath or something stupid like that. But when it's an ick, like something they've done or a way they act, I'm like, I don't think that's fair. And I think it's normally a reflection of something that you're missing in your life. Not to be a monk, but I do genuinely think that because that's how it worked for me anyway. I was like, ugh, icky, he's passionate. And I was like, yeah, that's fit. Like, that's what I want from someone. And that's what I aspire to be, to be able to just like, be open and vulnerable and talk freely about like my passions so why was that icky do you know what i mean anyway i'm a long distance with my boyfriend four hours plus and can't see it changing for years it stresses me out so much i do love him but sometimes i just overthink what should i do i find this quite difficult i think long distance is obviously very situa situational and some people can really deal with it and some people really can't for me if I was long distance with someone, I would need an end kind of goal in sight. Not like an end goal. So like if I've been long distance with someone in the past like few years, or like even now, technically my, me and my boyfriend are long distance when he's in uni, he's like two hours away. But like there's, an, there's like an end, I can see a near future end. Like, well, we're just at uni, we'll finish uni. And then like for me, that's enough. And then in summer we'll deal with whatever. Hopefully I'll be in Manchester so we won't really be long distance. But like if I even if I was moving back home, like I think I would need an end day or if I was going to move back home I feel like I would need to have that conversation with him like okay I'm going to be four hours away now what are we doing because I do think distance is really hard and I think it depends for people like different people different love languages I think would struggle with distance a lot like someone with like a physical touch or like quality time love language I feel like they would not do well in a long distance relationship so I think have a conversation with him a genuine honest conversation with him and be like where do you see this kind of going where do you see the end goal I'm sure you do really love him and that's what I mean I think it's very different for different people so I don't want to give like long distance relationship advice because I genuinely don't think I would be that good at it not like consistently like I could be away from my boyfriend for like a month or two months if I really had to say but like a consistent long distant relationship I think you always need to as well have when you're next going to see each other and a rough kind of like 
end goal. I think that will help. But I think just genuine, open, honest communication. Have a chat with them. Someone said where to go on your first holiday with your boyfriend. So I thought this was interesting because me and my boyfriend have been on two kind of holidays together. I say like holidays. They are obviously very much holidays. But to me in my head, holiday is like hot country beach. Like we've been on city breaks, which have been so much fun. And you know what? I'm so glad we've done them. And I'm so glad we went to Rome together right at the beginning. Like I'd literally known this boy. Literally I'd known this boy for like four weeks, I think. We booked to go to Rome together in like two or th no in like three weeks time so we'd not even known each other like two months and we were in Rome <laughs> but I think it was a good it's a good thing because I think a city break is a good idea because it's a short amount of time you know it's a long weekend it's three nights four nights it's a nice amount of time to see if you enjoy being in each other's company for that long it's kind of a fun thing because you're up and you're doing things and you're sightseeing you're not like lying down by a pool or something which again is bloody lovely like I want to go on a hot holiday with my boyfriend absolutely um, and that's also chill as well because then you know you might not argue about like what you can do today because you're just lying by the pool but I think a city break's a nice one because it's a bit shorter you know you're exploring you're out you're going out for like nice dinners or like breakfast or whatever I just think it's a nice idea and it's obviously a bit cheaper as well shorter flights you know we're not up in each other's grill for like a nine hour flight or something crazy um, so I think do like a city break because I just think it's a nice amount of time and there's like a nice amount of time to do things with each other. Advice on putting yourself out there with someone you like. I just think life is too short. If you really think about it, life is way too short. Just fucking go for it because you don't want to be sat in your rocking chair one day thinking, oh God, like I regret that. You just want to live life to the fullest, you know, put your heart on your sleeve. Who cares if they reject you? It's good for the plot. Do you know what I mean? And the thing is as well, if they reject you, literally who cares? Like what's the worst that's gonna happen? I like you or like, do you wanna go out for a drink? No, okay, no worries. Like that's, you're not, your world is not gonna come crashing and burning down. I think this one's all about like mindset. Don't be afraid to embarrass yourself. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there. There's literally nothing that can go wrong. I don't know why I said embarrass yourself. That's not what I meant. I mean like don't be afraid of embarrassing yourself because like it won't happen. And even if you do feel a bit like, oh God, like embarrassed, like it's not embarrassing if you're not embarrassed. Do you know what I mean? It's never awkward unless you find it awkward. It is perception. Do you know what I mean? Someone rejecting you is not embarrassing unless you find it embarrassing. It's not an embarrassing thing to happen to someone. So just go for it because who knows? This man could be your baby daddy. This man could literally be your husband, but you're not, this man could be your freaking soulmate and like you're just not gonna talk to him because you're scared that he might say no. Why does this man keep spitting out of his car? It's disgusting. So yeah, like you're gonna tell me that you're gonna pass up an opportunity that literally you have absolutely no idea where it could go with this guy just because you're scared he might say no. It's always that thing, isn't it? Like, oh, but what if? What if it goes wrong? But like, what if it fucking goes right? Oh, but what if he says no? But what if he says yes? Like, why are we always thinking about the like, what if the negative thing happens? But what if the fucking great thing happens? What if you go on the first date and it's so magical and then you like get together and you have babies and you live happily ever after? Do you know what I mean? Like, what if? Oh, this is interesting. Boyfriend doesn't want to live together after three years, but wants to stay together. I had another question about living with a boyfriend. And I always say, if you think you're going to be with someone for the rest of your life, Gabby once said this to me, if you think you're going to be with someone for the rest of your life, why rush things like living together? And also, like me and my brother were talking, it's like if you live with a partner, you're never, you're either going to break up or never not live with them again. Because this situation, I feel like, is kind of rare kind of unusual that you live with unless it's for like a year while you both need a house or something but if you're like let's move in together do you know what i mean it's very rare that you kind of stop living together like it's rare that you'd live with your boyfriend in a flat for a year and then you'd go and live with your mate in a flat for a year and then back with your boyfriend i feel like once you move in with your boyfriend that's it you've kind of moved in until like i said you kind of break up or you just keep living together forever obviously i don't know but obviously you need to have a conversation about why he doesn't want to live with you anymore because if he needs space or whatever 
I do kind of get that, but that's what I think you should do before you live with someone. So if you've never had that chance to do that before you live with someone, or maybe you've lived together for the three years of uni and now you've come out and he doesn't want to live with you, I think you can have that conversation because it couldn't necessarily, it might not be a necessarily a bad thing. Maybe you moved in together too soon and he needs like, he's like, no, do you know what? I've realized that like, I do actually love you and I want to get married to you, but I've realized if I don't live with you now, I mean, if I don't not live with you now, if I don't live by myself for a year or if I don't live with my friends for a year, it's something that I never would have done. And I do think that's fair enough. Although it's peculiar and it's unusual and it's hurtful, I do think that's fair. But obviously find out why, because if he seems a bit fishy or whatever and you think he might stop living with you and then like break up with you or you think it might be a bump in the road in your relationship, fine. But if it's for like growth, I think, yeah, that hurts, but it's kind of valid. Because I know I don't want to not live by myself at one stage in my life. So if he's never done that or he's never lived with his mates or something, I do think that's very valid. But I think it's one of them conversations where it's like you've just got to see why the reason is because obviously it does seem a bit unusual, but it could be for a very innocent reason and it could be good for both of you. And then my memory card ran out of battery. But I hope you guys enjoyed that little chatty, kind of turned into more of like a boy talk, girl talk, boy talk. Um, I really enjoyed it. I love filming videos like this and you guys always seem to really enjoy them as well. So hopefully there was some helpful advice in there. And yeah, I will see you on Monday with a weekly vlog. Mwah, bye.